Thinking Byzantine here, and today we'll be talking about the Van Eck Vectors Video Gaming and Esports ETF, or ESPO. Now before we get into this, I would like to say that I'm not a financial advisor, and I'm just expressing my own opinions, and please subscribe if you like these type of videos. Now let's get into this. Now ESPO's methodology is quite simple. They try they track a market cap weighted index of global firms involved in the video gaming and esports. Now here are the stats for ESPO. It was made in 2018, an expense ratio of 0.55%, an average PE of 51.61, at around $850 million in assets under management, average daily volume of around $11 million, a current dividend yield of 0.11%, at current share price of 77.45. Now, here's the top five holdings of ESPO. We have Tencent at 8.77, the video at 7.46, Bibli Inc. at 6.51, CLTD at 6.45, and AMD at 6.19%. Now, here are the sector weightings for ESPO. Communication services is the largest segment of ESPO at 75%, followed by information tech at 21%, and then lastly, consumer discretionary is at 4%. Now here are two alternatives for ESPO. We have he Hero and Gamer. Now Hero's expense ratio is at 0.5%. It has around $809 million in assets under management, around $7 million in daily volume, a current dividend yield of 0.65%, and a current share price of around $34.86. Now we have Gamer, which has an expense ratio of 0.75%, around $116 million in assets under management, average daily volume around $5 million, and out of the other two ETFs, um, Gamer has the largest dividend at 8.82%, and its current share price is at $89.98. Uh, I would also like to comment that Gamer is the smallest in terms of assets under management, while Espo is the biggest in terms of assets under management of these three ETFs that I've shown so far. Now, here's Espo versus Hero's performance since 2019. And as you can see here, the Hero slightly edges out Espo when with dividends reinvested. And now we have Espo versus Gamer. And as we can see here, Espo has been outperforming Gamer since Espo was um, created. Now, why would you invest into Espo? Well, gaming in particular is a fast growing industry. And gaming and stocks related to gaming had had a strong performance during COVID. And since its inception, ESPO has been outperforming the S&P 500. As you can see here, since uh, 2018 when ESPO was first created, it has been beating up on SPY, especially here since the dip, ESPO has taken off compared to uh, the S&P 500. Now, why would you not invest in Tespo? Well, the stocks within Espo may be overvalued, and maybe these stocks have overperformed due to COVID. As I said earlier, um, video gaming stocks in general have outperformed the total market. So there, so, there may be a small pullback in the future to get in on this if you want to buy into ESPO anyway. And ESPO, as you can tell, it has a very low yield and for people who are seeking dividend yield for passive investing, dividend investing, or even just retirement, ESPO may not be for you. As for this high expense ratio, well, it's just a lot more than a Vanguard S&P 500 index fund over, let's say, I think uh, VU is currently at 0.04%, uh, 
So with that in mind, um, ESPO's expense ratio is over 10 times VU, if I remember correctly. And lastly, ESPO is a newer fund, so there's not much history to compare it to uh, other ETFs. But in any case, like and subscribe for more content, and please tell me, what do you guys think of ESPO, and what type of type content you would like me to see produced in the future? This is Thinking Byzantine, and have a good day.